Hello, and welcome to the Cat and Sam show. Sam isn't here today. Filling in for Sam is Bethany. Hello, Bethany, Bethany, Bethany. Hi. I'm excited to be here. What, what do you think you'd like to talk to about, talk about today, Bethany? You know, I was thinking we should talk about the subtleties um, when you're in an abusive relationship, because it's not always a knockdown, drag out, screaming match. It's not always a big, huge fight. You know, a lot of times it's just little things that make you feel like it's your decision when really it's their form of control. So do you have some examples of those subtleties that you um, experienced? The biggest one that comes to mind is um, music, you know, um, if we'd be in the car going somewhere and um, a song came on, you know, most of the time we listen to his music anyway, right? But if, you know, the station, the radio station was on something that I liked or a song came on that I liked and he didn't like it, he wouldn't be dramatic about it. He wouldn't be loud about it. He would just be like, I don't like that song or that song is stupid. And so instead of just being like, well, I like that song and I'd like to listen to it. I'd say, okay, well, let's change it. And it would kind of build up to where it would be said so often or mentioned enough that I just wouldn't turn my music on. I just wouldn't listen to what I liked anymore because it was easier to just give him what he wanted. Are you um, a big music person? Do you do you love music? I do. You love to, what, what do you love about music? I, I like um, everything. <laughs> That's a cheesy answer though, right? Um, I, I don't know if it is or not. The reason I'm asking is because, you know, the subtlety of it is wearing down your choices. Yeah. Of what music or what song to sing or who to listen to. Yeah. And it's not just like it's one day of, oh, that's Dama. And it's it's a consistent that's dumb or that's stupid or mm -hmm. that's not good music or right. Yeah. Or um, the comparison of, Oh, music's just not what it used to be. <laughs> oh, these lyrics are so ridiculous. Like who says that, you know, just little things that make it seem, Oh, maybe it is. Or, Oh, maybe, maybe he's right. You know, Instead of, well, I like that song because the way the lyrics describe what they're going through and the way it matches well with the music that they chose to go with those lyrics, I like the way it makes me feel. I like the way my voice sounds when I sing this particular song because it's right in my range. You know, instead of that, it's just like, oh, okay, I'll give it up. Or... You don't like it, so let's make sure you're happy. Regardless, you know, it's one of those things like you think it's your decision. You think it's your, you think you're doing it for the betterment of yourself or for the betterment of them. And really, you're just giving into their control tactics. And, and also, you know, I think it, it speaks to me about, all of his songs were good, mm -hmm. right? Great music, right? Mm -hmm. And then yours aren't. And so, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Um, and and when you were talking there just a second ago about thinking, well, I you know I guess this isn't that great of a song, or you know, do you know what I mean? It's it's like that subtlety of I guess I don't know how to pick out music or, mm -hmm. you know, what's wrong with my choice. It's said in a way that lets you know that what you're choosing 
is is subpar Mm -hmm. without really coming out and saying that you know what i mean yeah and it in turn you know is destroying part of who you are it's um because music is a big part of my life i love to sing i love to listen to music i love to i don't dance very well but i like to dance around to music um i just like music music is fun music makes me feel good and um you know he we would listen to his music that didn't necessarily get me feeling that way didn't necessarily invoke those feelings in me and you know part of that is tearing away at it it helps to tear away at who you are it helps to help to mold you into what they expect you to be or what they want you to be instead of continuing to be yourself it's just another one of the little subtleties of breaking down who you are so let's so talk about you can be their idea. What about the subtlety between like I believe you've told me like he had one song that he really loved you to sing. Mm. And and you like to sing it. And then now he's going into something that is not in your range that you don't feel comfortable singing and he wants you to sing there. And the struggle you have with that. Yeah. um, So there was one song that I sang a lot. And he loved the way I sounded on it. He loved the way that I sang it. It was perfectly in my range. I hit the notes just right. Um, You know, we worked in bars quite a bit together. Which is a whole other thing we can talk about on another day. But, um... You know, they did karaoke a lot. And so on karaoke nights, I would go and I would sing. And I would always do that song because I knew he liked it. And it would get to, he got to the point where he was like, whatever. I've heard her singing a thousand times. I don't care. And I'm like, dude, like I'm up here singing the song because I know you like it. Like I'm doing this for you, you know? And it was just whatever. I don't care. Like I've heard you singing a thousand times. It's not any different. So then it got to where I was like, okay, well, Maybe I don't really want to sing. But then, like you were saying, you know, he'd come up with these songs or he would like a certain song by a certain artist that he thought I should learn. Because that's what my voice should sound like. That's what he wants my voice to sound like. But that's my voice isn't that style. That's not the style of singing that I do. And so I would feel like I wasn't good enough. I would feel like maybe I can't sing. Because I can't sing this particular song. Maybe I can't sing because I can't do the riffs that they do on that song. Or I can't do that certain thing she does with her voice on that song. Yeah, it's the subtleties of (laughs) that tearing down your spirit and who you are and make you questioning. Like, can I sing this range? Yes not to sing this range and you know i'm so glad you bring that up about subtleties because i think you know it is correct that people don't look to those little things and these relationships are so patterned that um you just have no idea about those little comments that take somebody down in just a second Mm -hmm. um, because they're said, you know, a a gazillion, if that's Mm -hmm. even a word, um, times in a day where you start questioning who you are, what you are, what your range is. Mm -hmm. How long have, how long have you been singing? My whole life. Have you taken lessons and no, um, I mean, I've, I've saying, I've just always loved singing, um, in junior high and high school, I was in, I was in choir and I like in, in high school, I was in two different choirs. Um, I was really active in the church that I went to at that time. 
Um, so I was also in the praise team, the choir there, and the youth praise team at that church. Um, I never took formal singing lessons, but I guess, you know, Which, everything that I've learned in those kind of contributes. The The choir instructors that were there to help you, mm-hmm. they knew they knew music. They told you yeah. what range you were in. You knew what range. You knew how to read notes. Mm-hmm. You knew if it worked for you or not. You, you knew if it called to you. And all of what he's doing is pulling you away from who you were and making you question it and not question it in a good way. Like, you know, maybe, you know, like if I was singing and um, I sing alto. So if I was singing soprano, it would be horrendous (laughs) for somebody to have to listen to. And I know that. So I, you know, um, because so I learned you know it. Means, yeah. Right. So um, having somebody want me to sing soprano, I'm going to be lousy at it. <laughs> it's not going to fare well. But instead of saying, I can't do that. It's like, okay, I'll try. Cause yeah. you want to try to make that person happy mm-hmm. instead of knowing, you know what I mean? It's, it's that subtlety yeah. of being out of your pocket and, and, you know, it, them moving the goalposts, them deciding who they want you to be. Yeah. And then it still for. isn't enough. It still isn't good enough. It's never you know, enough. Even if I had, even if I had mastered the song that he wanted me to sing, even if I had been able to do it and hit all the riffs and all the little, you know, things that were signature to that song, song person's voice, um, even if I could do that, it wouldn't have been good enough or it would have been, oh, why, why, why did you try to do that? No, <laughs> you know, it, like you said, the moving of the goalposts, it's never enough. It's never, it's never what, what you think they want. They and, maybe don't even know what they want. Right. Right. And sometimes it is so that. All of a sudden, you know, oh, you did that so wonderfully. And you're like, oh, he liked that. So then you start doing more like that. Yeah. And it's and it's still going against you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's still that this isn't who I am. But I'm having to be this in order for it to just be okay. Yeah. Um, I talk a lot about, you know, in, uh, in, on the page that I run and, um, sometimes in, in back in those messages on Facebook that I get, um, I'll get somebody who'll be like, we can't, uh, eat broccoli. Because they don't like the way it smells. And you can't have this food because Mm -hmm. it it reminds them of some ant. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's just the same kind of food all the time that this person wants. Yeah. Um, My example in that would be uh, Chinese food. Like, I love Chinese food. Absolutely love it. wasn't allowed to have it around him. Uh, the one time. And it's not I making him eat it, it either. No, it's not making, no, he couldn't, right? he couldn't even stand the smell. Right. So um, like I couldn't, if we were getting something out to eat that night and I wanted Chinese food, I couldn't get it because he did not want that smell in his car. He did not want that smell in our house. It was not going to happen. The one time that I actually was allowed to have Chinese food during our relationship was um, I think it was my first official mother's day. And that was my mother's day gift was I got to get Chinese food that day. And I was excited. I was excited. Right. You know, and it was one of those things that I was like, okay, well he doesn't like it. He doesn't like the smell of it. It's fine. No big deal. So then when I did finally get it, I was like, Oh my God, thank you. 
I shouldn't have to thank you for something that I should have had the ability to have at any point in any time. Right. And did he, I mean, honestly, did he get like. He didn't get you know, sick. Right. He that's what I mean. It, it's not like he, he didn't have to eat it. He didn't eat it. You know, he got something else that day. It was just, we had to keep the did you notice him in the car because it couldn't, he didn't want the car stinking. Did you notice him? Did you notice him like having a hard time with that? Like, ugh, smell or, you know what I mean? Did you notice any um, grimacing or? A, a little bit, but it was more like, well, you better thank me. Oh. Because, because you know how much I hate the smell of Chinese food. You know how much I hate that. And I'm letting you put it in our car. <sighs> I'm letting you have it in front of me, even though I cannot stand the smell of it. And how wonderful he is because he's allowing oh, yes. you to have, Thank you right? so much. Right? It is those subtleties that drive these relationships. Um, what a great topic to pick. Thanks. You know, the um, the thought process of, of how, because those really do, they're kind of like the staple, you know what I mean? Yeah. In the relationship. Because and a lot of people it, don't think about that, right? You know, like most people think, okay, domestic abuse, domestic violence, it has to be physical or it has to be they're screaming and yelling at each other. But it's not always like that. You know, sometimes it is just those little subtle things that slowly tear away at who you are. and a lot of times those are the first signs that are going to lead you further into that cycle. But I, I, you know, I think my main point in that is that I want people to know that it's not always obvious. It's not always in your face. A lot of times it's just these little things that they're saying or these little things that they're doing or these little things that they're expecting you to do that might normally be out of character for you. And that's not okay. That's not healthy. Right. And I think, you know, and I think the subtleties also should go into, a, you know, thinking about it a little bit into the facial uh, expressions that are also with those subtle um, you know what I mean? It's like all of a sudden you've got this grimace or you've got this, uh, intimidation or this look that you did something wrong to go with those that further drives that, that it's like you said, it's not a big fight. It's all of a sudden, you know, just basically a way of saying what I like, what I feel, what I enjoy you know, is not good thing. enough. Correct. That was a great topic. I loved being with you and I can't wait to have see you again. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye right. for now. Bye. Hello. Thank you for watching our channel today. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell for any new content and find us on Patreon and your favorite podcasts. We hope we're one of them. Bye-bye.